My Son Chakras, episode 191. Don't wish it was easier. Make yourself stronger. The seven chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. For thousands of years, this ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, founder and host of My 7 Chakras where we dive deep into the ancient world to uncover nuggets of wisdom that will help you transform your life. So especially if you're interested in actionable steps that you can take right away, then you are in the right place, my friend. And as always, before we move on to the main portion of today's session, let's listen to our latest iTunes review written by Magnus K. Thank you, Aditya. I can only express gratitude for the time, energy, and resources that you have graciously poured into the wonderful creation that is My 7 Chakras. Magnus, thank you so much for that review. I am so glad that you're enjoying our episodes. Action Taker, if you want your review to be read out as well, then make sure you share your views and experiences in the form of an iTunes review. How do you do that? It's super simple. If you're on the podcast app on your iPhone, just hit reviews and then hit write a review. You can also use this link to jump directly onto the iTunes review page. The link you need is my 7 forward slash review. That's my 7 forward slash review. Now, by now, you know that I read each and every review and I read them out in front of our listeners because I am so proud of them. And that truly means a lot to me. So make sure you take a few minutes to share your thoughts with everyone else. And with that, I am super excited. I am really elated to bring you our featured guest for today, JJ Virgin. So JJ, are you ready to inspire? I am. That is amazing. Celebrity nutrition and fitness expert, JJ Virgin helps clients lose weight fast by breaking free from food intolerances and crush their sugar cravings. She's the author of four New York Times bestsellers, JJ Virgin's Sugar Impact Diet Cookbook, The Sugar Impact Diet, The Virgin Diet, and The Virgin Diet Cookbook. JJ is also a frequent blogger at Huffington Post, Mind Body Green, and other outlets as as well as popular guest on TV, radio, and in magazines. She has provided nutrition and training programs for a wide variety of famous faces, including CEOs, athletes, and celebrities, including Gene Simmons, Ben Stiller, Tracy Thoms, and Superman, Brandon Ruth. So JJ, welcome to My 7 Chakras. I am truly excited to have you on our show. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here too. Beautiful. So before we move on, take a few moments to tell us a bit more about your story. All right. Well, you heard the uh, the professional side. On the other side, what's really important to me is that I am a mom and I'm a mom of two boys. They're now, they're now 19 and 20. And over the last four and a half years, we've been through a major experience that's created a big shift in my life. And I know we're going to talk about that some today, so I'm not going to spoil the surprise on it, but it's really kind of launched my career in a different direction and helped me really get clear on like the most important important in our lives, uh, thing in our lives really are the connections that we have and the relationships that we have. Wonderful. It's so reminded me of what Tony Robbins says that at the end of our life, we're not going to remember the things that we've collected. We're going to remember the memories that we have uh, had with the people that we love. So thanks a lot for sharing that profound wisdom. And with that, let's begin this show with a dose of inspiration. My question is, what is your favorite inspirational quote? And how does that quote apply in your day-to-day life? Here it is. Don't wish it was easier. Make yourself stronger. And that is really what my story has been over the last four and a half years and before that. And early on, I remember I was in like elementary school and I had to run a race. And I was like, how am I going to do it? My mom's like, you just you just go there and you just lean into it. And I'm like, all right, I can do this. So I, I look now for that that other quote I love, um, do one thing a day that scares you. I, I look at something now, if it's scary and difficult as a sign that I'm playing big enough in the world and that I need to step into it. Beautiful. Love that quote. 
Don't wish it was easier. Make yourself stronger. Action Tribe, I know it's hard. I know you're going through challenges and trials in your life. But really, don't wish it was easier. Make yourself stronger. And I know that you're doing that. So kudos to you. So let's dive in. Uh, JJ, what inspired you to write your book, The Miracle Mindset? So it was a life experience that actually happened as my first big book, The Virgin Diet, was coming out. A couple weeks before that book was getting ready to be published, my older son was 16 at the time, Grant, and he was crossing the street and he got hit by a car going 40 miles an hour and was left for dead. He was airlifted to the local hospital. When we got there, they told us that because of his injuries, he had a torn aorta that kills 90% of the people on the scene, and he had um, 13 fractures and multiple brain bleeds. They said we needed to let him go. And my other son was, you know, we, we were looking at the doctor and we said, well, but why don't we airlift him to a hospital that could do the surgery he needs? And the, the doctor said, you know, he's never going to survive another airlift. Even if he did, he's not going to survive surgery. And even if by the off chance he was survived both of those, he'll be so brain damaged, it, it wouldn't be worth it. And my younger son, who was 15, said, so like a 0.25% chance he'd make it? And the doctor said, that's about right, son. And Bryce said, we'll take those odds. And that's when we really got into action. And so the miracle mindset is the mindset that Bryce used, I used, Grant used, our whole family used all throughout the last four and a half years to help my son come through a brain injury, um, be better than he was before. And this was a person who was basically dead on the street. Um, and I was able to do four New York Times bestsellers alongside it because my my business became even more important um, to my son's well-being as I was going through this because I knew that I had to be able to really provide for him for everything he was going to need. Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot for sharing that story. You said that your older son was crossing the street and was all of a sudden hit by a car. He was airlifted. They found out that he had a torn aorta, 13 fractures, and they said that they would have to let him go. The doctors had literally given up due to many reasons, and they said that it wouldn't be worth it. And at that point, as you mentioned, your son was the optimist and said, what are the chances? They said 2.5% chance. And he was convinced, along with you, that you need to take action. And as a family, as a team, you're, you're stuck together. And what's interesting to note is as a result of that experience, you had massive success in other areas of your life as well, like the best-selling books that you released. So diving a bit deeper, what exactly is the medical mindset and why does our mindset matter so much? And, you know, this came up because as I went through all this, people kept going, now, how are you doing this? Like, you know, mm. my son was in a coma. I launched a book sitting in the ICU next to my son in a coma. And at first, I'm literally just going through it and I'm being essential and not, you know, I'm just with my son and with my business and that's it. But when I started to look back and go, how did I do this? I realized it wasn't, you know, first I thought, AJ, I'm so healthy. I was like, oh, it's because I'm so healthy. I was like, no, it's, mm. that's not what it was. It was that first mindset of my younger son saying, you know, we'll take those odds and me overruling the doctor. And then, you know, standing in the hospital and looking at my son in a coma and saying, you're going to be 110%. This will be the best thing that ever happened to you. And just displaying that over and over. And I, I looked back and I thought, you know, when I look at people who inspire me in my life, who I think are amazing, who've done great things, every single one of them has one thing in common. They've gone through challenges and they're better because of it. They've stepped up, you know, they get knocked down, they get up, they're bigger than ever. And so I started looking at what common factors were, did they share that all collectively come up to what I call the miracle mindset, this idea that you have a growth mindset that you can develop. And so so the elements are being resilient, being an action taker, living in abundance rather than limitation, living in the present, being courageous, being collaborative and being able to ask for help as well as to give it and being able to forgive. That's really interesting. Uh, so you went through that experience, you saw the results that you did and people saw you and the change and they asked you, JJ, how are you doing this? And that sort of started your uh, series of introspections about your experience as well as you did some research about the titans of life, right? The yes. leaders of life and mm -hmm. found out what they were doing and you found out that everyone had gone through their own challenges and they had what is known as a growth mindset that your yesterday is not equal to your future and that change is definitely possible. Now, you spoke about the concept of resilience. What does it mean to be 
resilient and how is that different from strength you know i i view resilience as strength over time so hmm. when you look at someone who's resilient here's what's interesting with resilience when you look at the resilient studies out there people who go through challenges and and adversity and succeed they get they get through them they actually are happier and they're more successful so resilience is that ability to get knocked down and get back up again and get knocked down and get back up again right over and over and stay positive and stay focused on the successful pieces. And that's why it's like, yes, it requires courage to step into scary situations. It, re it requires strength to be able to handle that. And that repeated process is what develops the resilience. Wonderful. So it seems like the difference between a sprint run and a marathon, right? Exactly. Because if you're in for the long run, uh, people go through challenges over time. Like you mentioned, the studies have shown that they not only succeed, but they are happy and they're fulfilled as well. So it seems to change their life overall. Completely. And that's an important thing. It's like sometimes when we're right in the thick of things, we can't see outside of it. Yeah. Um, but when you look at it later, if you just can realize we're in it for the long game, right? It's in for the long run. And I even had a chance uh, a couple of weeks ago, I asked my son, who's now 20, I said, honey, and this has been a very hard four and a half years. He had a massive brain injury. He came out of a coma and had to relearn everything, who he was, mm. how to eat, every single bit of, of how to be a human. He had to relearn. And I said, sweetheart, if you had the chance to do this all over again, it's let's go back four and a half years. Would you cross the street? Yeah. And he said, absolutely. I'm better because of it. Gave me chills. Wow. Yes. And it's so true. Sometimes you can learn so much from the youth, right? Mm -hmm. Because they haven't seen the world like adults have or people who are older have, but they've got a different perspective and there's so much to learn. Now, like you've shared, you faced many challenges in your life, one of which was the tragic accident when you chose and your family chose to fight for your son life. What was your initial reaction when you heard that your son had met with a hit and run accident? You know, it was surreal. Um, I was reflecting on it because as I was yeah. going through it, it felt like I was watching a movie. And I think in, in retrospect, I that was because it was too much for my psyche to take in at once. Like to see mm -hmm your child lying on a gurney, bones sticking through their skin, half their body covered in road rash with glass sticking through and doctors telling you to let them go. You just, you just can't take that all in. So it was like a protective mm -hmm. mechanism to watch it from that side of being a movie. And I didn't know what to do. And, you know, I walked outside the hospital and because I'm thinking, should we overrule the doctor? What should we do? Once we'd heard that there was a doctor who could do the surgery two hours away, my yeah. biggest concern was, what would Grant want? Like, what if we saved him and he was, you know, a vegetable? What, what, does, yeah. what should I do? And I literally stood outside and I got totally present and I just listened. And I remember it was dark. There was a full moon. I could hear the, the, the little insects going. I could smell everything. And I got this divine hit that said, you fight for your son. And that was like it. And that's when I walked back in. It was like, that's it. You know, <laughs> airlift him. We are doing this. And it helped just make that decision decision of, okay, I believe you get what you expect and that we're never better than when we're challenged. And so let's just decide you're going to be 110%. This will be the best thing that's going to happen to you. And believe me, I was scared to death. It wasn't like I say, yeah. this is going to be, you know, no, I was terrified, but we had a 0.25% chance. We had, that's all we needed. We had the hope. And then I had to hold on to a big vision to get me through it. And that's what we did. Amazing. So it seems like a combination of what you would do immediately versus taking into consideration the long-term vision as well, right? So it was, it was both. Uh, now, my question is, when you were outside, it was dark, the full moon was outside, the doctors had said that your son wouldn't last through the night. What was your thinking like? Because I'm curious to know how, how, how did you, uh, what did you do exactly in your mind so that our listeners can use this uh, mindset in their life as well? Could you walk us through exactly what happened? You know, what's interesting. I've always done this. I always play best mm. case, worst case, best case, worst case, right? Okay. So I'm sitting outside you know, by myself, because I need to get clear and kind of get as far away, try to detach from the emotional part of this. Because it, again, I was going, now what's going to be the best thing for him? What would he want? What should mm -hmm. I do? And I'm going, okay, we go after this. We, we um, airlift him. He survives the airlift. And literally, I mean, the doctors are saying, do not do this, right? That is their advice. Yeah. In the medical report from this first hospital, they have written in there, we told her not to do this. We said, don't do it. Now, we knew he was going to die. They told us within 24 hours at this hospital. So to me, I'm like, well, why wouldn't we do it? He's dying. 
dying here. But what I wanted to make sure of was that we weren't just bringing him into a situation that would create just a, a terrible life for him. And so that's what I was standing outside going, best case, worst case, best case, worst case. And, you yeah. know, kind of looking at those odds and the risk reward ratio. And it was so clear to me, like, you take those odds, right? If there's any bit of a chance, that's all I needed. And what was so interesting, AJ, is the doctor who saved Grant's life, this amazing surgeon in, in LA said, you know, I get in and a doctor when they do this, when they take a case from another hospital, when they say they'll take the case, that other hospital's done, they relinquish, they send it on over. So he could mm -hmm. have been receiving a corpse. He took on a big risk. And he also had to accumulate, he had to assemble five orthopedic neurosurgery critical care, like five different teams at three in the morning and get a hold of a stint that, you know, from another hospital that was part of a study that was now over that wasn't even supposed to be used in kids. He's, he did all of this stuff, right? Same type of thing. He's like, just, he looked at the risk reward and said, I'll, I'll take those odds. I'm using this. I'll ask for forgiveness later once, he, mm -hmm. once he's alive. And so that was really my whole processing of trying to make a decision right there, pure focus as to what's the best decision in the moment for him. Love that. And I love that you brought out the fact that the doctor who takes such a case, he or she is literally staking their whole reputation yeah. on this, right? Yeah. And that's what people don't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize it till I yeah. met with him later. And he explained to me that, you know, they get the call around midnight about this case. Mm -hmm. And here's, I mean, it, you know, the case isn't looking good. He's got a, an, an aorta that's ready to rupture. And for if someone doesn't know what an aorta is, it is what takes the blood from your heart that's been oxygenated and pumps it around your body. So if you don't have that, you're over. It's it's done. No more heart and uh, no more body. And he had three brain bleeds. He was in a deep, deep coma, along with like both his femurs were, were broken and bleeding out. I mean, it just... It was gruesome. And not only did he need to be there, he had to get the orthopedic surgery team, he had to get the neurosurgery team, he had to get a pediatric and an adult critical care team. So all these people had to assemble along with him trying to find a stent, trying to find the one and get mm -hmm. that flown in. And this is all in the middle of the night. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, wow. th this was, <laughs> you know, in life, you get a couple angels. This is mine. Awesome. So, okay. So you told us that uh, you, you walked us to the situation and it seemed like you were using your all your processing power. You were using your creative mind to sort of imagine the best and worst case scenario. You were imagining, visualizing the different futures based on what decision you took. You were also using your analytical and logical mind because you were calculating the odds and the risk. And like you mentioned, there was also this spiritual mind that you had tapped into because you obviously had a lot of courage to go through all of that. So my question is, where does all this courage stem from? I believe that we develop courage just like all of those other attributes of the miracle mindset. And that's why actually I wrote the book because once I started to look at this and went, you know what? I wasn't born with this. We're not born courageous, you know? We become yeah. courageous over time. And so, you know, because someone said to me the other day, they said, oh, you must have always been determined and this and that. I go, I was a scared, shy little girl, <laughs> you know? And, the, and, mm -hmm. and I still remember the first time my mom took me a, to a dance class and I went and hid in the corner. You know, this is not like I, I was born this way. It's like you get into a scary, uncomfortable situation and you go, oh, that wasn't so bad. And you get into a more scary, uncomfortable situation and you go, oh, that wasn't so bad. You know, and you just keep expanding your comfort zone. And every time you make the commitment to go after something that's a little scary, that's out of your comfort zone and you've got to be courageous and you step into it and you pull it off, you get more confidence. You get more confidence to go into the next bigger, scarier situation. And so that's where the courage has come from. It's something that you can develop. It's just, I think for so many of us, and I know as a parent, I I tried to protect my kids too much. I look back at it now and I'm like, you know, here I am thinking the most amazing people in my life are the people who've been challenged the most, who've like, this is how we need to raise our kids to put them in progressively more challenging situations so that they can learn how to thrive in them. Wonderful. There you go, Action Tribe. We are not exactly born with courage. We develop courage over time, just like developing your muscles in the gym as time progresses, you can expose yourself to different levels of what you might term as difficult situations or trials or challenges. And, and as time progresses, as you, uh, like we've discussed earlier, go through that marathon of life, you become uh, happier, 
because you've learned to overcome those very challenges and you develop your courage as we're learning. Now, uh, JJ, there are many life lessons that you talk about in your book, but of them, what is the biggest lesson that you hope the listeners can take away from reading your book? Biggest lesson, I really think, is that we're never better than when we're challenged. And, you know, I'll give you a little backstory in this. When Grant came out of the hospital and we brought him home, I was naturally very, very wary of him out being outside walking. <laughs> like, you know, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I still remember we were somewhere, we were getting ready to cross the street, and there was a car way far away. And he steps out and I grab him. I like jump him. And he's looking at me going, mom, what are you doing? You know? So, Mm -hmm. and, and I realize now, like he asked me uh, a couple months ago, he goes, you know, I can't, because one of the things that happens with the brain injury is you have issues quite often with memory. And he said, mom, I just can't remember these appointments. Can you like call me before? And I go, "Uh uh-uh, I can't call you before. You have got to learn how to use your phone to set your appointments. I'm not, this is going to be hard. You've got to step up. And he goes, okay. It was like, you know, he wanted to be challenged. He didn't want me to make it easy. And I think that's such an important takeaway for all of us. It's like lean into the challenging situations. That's where the growth comes from. You don't grow when it's easy. Absolutely. And was he doing this intuitively or is he also reading some books on neuroplasticity? Because that talks about the very same thing in that instead of supporting the person, the brain itself can develop, can heal, can change itself. I'm reading a book called The Brain That oh, Changes Norman Itself. Oh, Norman Deutsch. so amazing. He's the yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's obsessed yeah. with this stuff now. You know, yeah. so we have lived with this from the time he was in a coma. And by the way, people can hear in comas because it's amazing the stories he's told. Mm. And uh, from like that first day, I was like, Grant, you're going to be 110%. Your name means warrior. We've got this. We can do this. You know, so and and, you know, a lot of rah, rah, but I was scared to death. So just, you know, don't think it was just all easy here. It was challenging, but I just had to keep that 110% on the forefront. And it's been so interesting because all along the way, it's not like he went from waking up to 110%. It is a 1% by 1% yeah. little, little shifts. And you just got to look at every little win, every little miracle and go, there's one, right? And sometimes it's it's an yeah. eyelid flutter and you've got to win. But um, he has been obsessed with what he can do to heal his brain to the level of he got a one of the um, headbands that measures your brain waves. Then he bought Tesla coils and developed this energy system so that he can use the energy from the Tesla coils to help him change his brain waves. Uh, he's doing wow. some super cool stuff. He is uh, he is he is going to be a leader in brain recovery. Beautiful. I didn't know you said that did did you say grant means it uh, does. Warrior? It means warrior. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> so some listeners might be getting ideas on how to name their or what to name their newborns uh jj one of the reasons why people listen to our show is because everyone has their own challenges their own trials and crisis that they're going through maybe at this very moment so what advice do you have for someone who feels like they don't have what it takes to get through this challenge well here's the thing you know and i remember early on um when grant was younger. Grant was um, diagnosed with bipolar when he was younger, and he was a very difficult kid growing up. And I said to mm-hmm. I took him to a therapist, and he said, okay, well, here's the things that you're going to have to do. And I go, I'm not strong enough to do this. And he said, well, then you better get strong enough, because this is what you're facing. And those words, mm-hmm. I remember those words when I was staying in the hospital. I remember looking at Grant going, I'm not strong enough. And I'm thinking the doctor, the doctors, the therapist saying, well, you better get strong enough you know what? That's the thing. You better get strong enough. And if you're not strong enough on your own, that is where you ask for help. One of the key things that saved Grant's life is the day after it happened, I actually sent an email out to everybody and I said, I need help. Like, I don't need sympathy. I need your support. Like any ideas, any, anything, I need your help. And boom, it Mm -hmm. came out. Um, so it was amazing. So that's what I say. It's like, you, you gotta, you don't have a choice here. You gotta step up, but if you're not strong enough, find those people around you who are and ask for their help. You'd be amazed how that will help lift you up. Love that. Now you've obviously accomplished a lot in life. You've had four New York times bestselling books. You run multiple businesses. You deliver keynotes. You appear on TV, radio shows, and in workshops as well. So my question is, how do you plan your week? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I am super highly organized and that is how you manage yeah. to pull all that stuff off. And I have 
blocked out my time. So if I'm doing interviews, um, I do interviews in a row. And if I'm recording my uh-huh. podcast, I do them in a row. If I'm out traveling, I line up as many things as possible. And I have like an amazing executive assistant who does all of this stuff for me. And that is how I pull all that stuff off. And I'm ferocious about my time. And, mm-hmm. and being smart with my time. If I'm doing meetings, we have agendas. You know? So I'm a fierce yeah. organizer, a fierce planner, and um, I, I protect my, my time and have good boundaries. It's the other thing I've learned. <laughs> All right. So a couple of things here. You said you batch process your tasks. You reduce your switching costs so that you can focus on the task at hand. You have an assistant, which I think is amazing, so that you don't have to do everything yourself. You have an agenda. So you stick to the agenda and you know what, you, what you're going to discuss or talk about when going into a meeting. Now, once you have all this planning in place, what is your secret to getting stuff done? Is there a productivity tip that helps you focus and get more done in a day? Um, You know, I really think actually there's a couple things. Number one, and this, I did this, by the way, when Grant was in the hospital, it was the first thing I decided Mm. when he was in the hospital was that I was going to practice extreme self-care. Now, I already had those habits in place. And I think that's so important because habits create the structure that really gives you freedom in your life, right? So I was already Mm -hmm. used to, I get eight hours of sleep, I exercise every day. And you might hear and go, but your son was in the hospital, you had to be there, and I had to launch a book next to his bed. But I knew because of what I had to do, see, the more you need to do and the more focused, the more you need to be able to think clearly, the more critical it is to practice extreme health self-care. That means getting eight to nine hours of sleep every night. That means taking time every day for some mindfulness, whatever that practice is for you. For me, it's getting up every morning, pulling out a journal and writing my three things I'm grateful for. And then framing my day at the end of the day, it's what are the three wins or the three little miracles of the day. Um, and in the hospital, I was running up and down the hospital stairs. I was doing my first trip training on the stairs and I was having friends bring me over healthy food. And so that is, those are the things that help me stay focused on, on target throughout the day. And then if I need to throughout the day, I've got little mindset hacks. If I'm like getting, if I, cause the only thing that will get me off my groove is, um, if I get overscheduled, if things, if like something runs late, I hate being late, something runs late and I'm overscheduled, then I, and then I start getting that real stress and I'll do some um, emotional freedom technique tapping to get my cortisol back in check. So you spoke about the fact or the idea of practicing extreme self-care, getting adequate sleep, meditation, your gratitude journal practice. And I loved that you mentioned that habits give us the structure that gives us the freedom in life. Is that correct? Yeah. Wonderful. So it seemed like because of your habits that you had practiced and, you know, prepared for uh, maybe months or, or years back, you were sort of well prepared to handle that situation, at least from the standpoint of having those well uh, 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 or the, those strong habits. Is that correct? Yes. And that's a key point, by the way. You know, one of the things that that happened as I came through this is my first focus was, oh my gosh, what if I hadn't have been as healthy as I was coming into this, right? Exactly. Like I had mm-hmm. to, the first night we didn't sleep at all, of course. And then um, I had to, I was doing interviews in the in the hospital. Like I was sitting next to Grant in the ICU. Then I'd run out, do an interview in the like room next door. They set up a room for me. I just, I had to be completely on all the time. There was, if in the, and if you're sick, you're not going into the ICU. I had to walk in there gloved and masked and gowned. Right. So my first thing was, oh my gosh, what if I hadn't been this way? I have to get people because so many people, AJ, say, oh, you know what? I'll start that program tomorrow, right? I'll start that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but I realized actually it's way bigger than that. What had allowed me to do all of this was putting all of those habits in place and not just ones for self-care, but but learning how to be courageous in life, building resilience in life, right? All of those things had prepared me for this very moment. It wasn't my first rodeo. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <to put> it. <laughs> so there you go, Action Tribe, the best Time to start is right away. And as you know, our show is all about giving you those actionable steps. So JJ, based on what you've shared today, for those who want to change their mindset today, what is that one action step that you'd like to recommend for our listeners? This is the biggest thing that you can do, and it takes a minute in the morning, and it will change everything for you, I promise. And that is waking up, and you need to have a physical journal and a pen don't do this on your phone. You wake up, you roll over. I literally have my journal where I can wake up, roll over, grab it and pen 
and I sit up in bed and I write down the three things or people I'm grateful for and I just feel it. And, you know, a lot of times I write a lot more than that, but I always make sure I just get that in at least because you can always get that in. Action Tribe to access the show notes for today's episode, visit my 7 forward slash 191. That's my 7 forward slash 191. An inconvenience is only an adventure wrongly considered. An adventure is only an inconvenience rightly considered. This is an amazing quote by G.K. Chesterton. Action Tribe, I'm going to repeat this quote once again. An inconvenience is only an adventure wrongly considered. An adventure is only an inconvenience rightly considered considered. Think about it. Is there any inconvenience that you are having in your life right now? Maybe it's a financial challenge. Maybe it's a health challenge that you're going through. Maybe you've recently lost a loved one or you're going through a troubled relationship. Whatever it is, I know it might not be easy, but try to think about your inconvenience as an adventure because just like an adventure, you are always in control of your life. Whatever you're going through will end soon. You're in this situation because you have something to learn from this. Make sure you take in the whole experience, learn from it, and take action. And always remember, life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Because like we're learning, life is an adventure. So JJ, talk to us about a time when you experienced a major life challenge. How did you get into that situation? And then what steps did you take to overcome it. All right. Well, obviously the biggest life challenge has been going through what I've gone through with my son. Um, and honestly, all the steps that I use to overcome it are the things that I've built all throughout. And they're not the things that you would think. They are having the resilience, having courage, um, being willing to go against doctor's orders and stand up for what we believed in. And the biggest thing that helped us through it every single day was, again, starting that day with gratitude and ending the day with the winds and recognizing every little thing as you know that we could see throughout the day that was he where he was getting better made those big shifts for us got it so looking back now looking at the memories in just one sentence what is that one major life lesson that you'd like to share with our listeners today big life lesson you are never better than when you're challenged when you see something coming up for you that scares you that's a sign that you need to step into it because if you're if things are easy for you you're playing too small you want to feel that little pit scared uncomfortableness and step into it that means you're playing a bigger game love that thanks a lot for sharing your story i think it's highly inspirational and you shared with us uh, like you did elaborate a while back that uh, the hit and run accident that your son had gone through was the biggest life challenge that you had come across it was it was really uh, challenging not only from uh, the point of your mind in terms of what you had to process, the different scenarios that you would envision, the different people that you had to reach out to, and the fact that you had to ensure that your business was still operational. You had to do those interviews. You had to make those appearances. But what really helped you, like you shared, is uh, the practices, the habits that you already had in place that you had prepared uh, well before your uh, morning gratitude practice, your mindfulness, your meditation. Uh, and as a result, uh, the resilience and the courage that you developed uh, showed results not only uh, in your personal life, but also in your business and other areas, areas as well. And like you've told us, people began asking you, JJ, how did you do that? How did you come across or overcome this challenge? And that's how uh, you're, you're going to launch this book, which I'm sure many people are going to love as well. The Miracle Mindset will have the link up in the show notes and you've taught us effectively today that you are never better than when you are challenged if things are easy then it means that you're playing too small action tribe expose yourself to challenges and trials because that's how you will grow thanks a lot for sharing that uh, profound knowledge with us jj thank you for having me so action tribe i hope you enjoyed today's session as much as i have we still have some stuff coming up in today's episode but as you go out in your life today to take action remember this key principle you are the sum average of the people that you hang out with yes reading a book is important working on your mindset is critical and so is practicing but if you're doing all of this and you have friends who don't believe in growth don't believe in transformation and don't believe in taking action they might try to 
bring you back to your old ways of thinking. They might try to convince you that what you're working towards, what you're dreaming about and what you desire is not worth it and is a complete waste of time. You don't want that. So if you can, try to find at least one or two people who have similar goals and aspirations. In fact, find people who are where you want to be a few years down the line. Because just being in their company, just hanging out with them will have a profound impact on you. And as JJ said, sometimes you, you can't do stuff just by yourself, right? You need to have the courage and the determination to ask for help, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Thing. And like Howard Schultz once said, when you are surrounded by people who share a passionate commitment around a common purpose, anything is possible. So JJ, as on today, what is your life's calling? What is my life's calling? So, you know, it's interesting, <laughs> like if you'd asked me this five years ago, it would have been a very different question. And I almost wonder if you <laughs> asked me again, another five years where it will be. You know, today I realized that I, I queried my community a year ago and I said, if you're not where you want to be in your health right now, why isn't, why aren't you? And I thought it would be because they can't get the sugar out of their diet or they can't stop eating bread. Mm. I thought it'd be one of those things. And they told me it was because they didn't feel good enough. They didn't feel worthy. And it made me realize that there are loads of great strategies out there in the world, but we will never outgrow our mindset. And that the number one thing that we need to up-level and upgrade in order to up-level and upgrade our life is our mindset. So my big calling right now is to help people do just that. Thanks a lot for sharing. Now, out of all the stories, you've shared with us many stories, many anecdotes, you shared with us many tips. Was there ever a defining moment that really changed your life? Maybe a phrase that you read in a book, an interaction that you had or an experience. What was that one defining moment that really changed your life? things for you? You know, there's just been series and series and series of defining moments throughout my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will tell you one that's been showing up a lot for me lately that I think it is so good for all of us is one that a mentor said to me early on. And she just said, listen, truly listen. That was her thing. Listen, truly listen. And I realized mm. that more and more, like if we just, that night I stood outside and I just listened. And I was able to know exactly what to do. And whether it's listening to yourself, listening to your heart, or just really connecting with the person next to you, you know, not looking at your phone, not looking, you know, just <laughs> listening. It's so powerful what you will learn. So there you go, Action Tribe. Listen, truly listen. Not just here, but make sure you listen. And with that, we've arrived at the very last round for today, the Wisdom Round. Now, this round contains four rapid-fire questions so that our listeners can take note and take action. So, JJ, what is the best advice that someone's ever given you? Best advice. Best advice. Get eight hours of sleep every night. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Name a personal habit that keeps you going. Um, my morning ritual of of being in gratitude. Awesome. And that's actually my next question. Could you elaborate or tell us more about what your morning routine looks like? Yep. Every single morning I get up, I do my gratitude ritual. I have a bulletproof coffee from my buddy Dave Asprey. I take my supplements. I do my framing for the day of what I know I want to get started with. And I have my morning shake, my virgin, JJ virgin shake. And that's what I do every single morning. Awesome. So you spoke about bulletproof coffee. For listeners who don't know what that is. <laughs> well, I actually just do a... Dave's bulletproof beans. Um, one of my, one of my best friends on the planet is this guy, this biohacker, Dave Asprey. And he created this coffee with grass fed butter and coconut oil in it. Um, so it works great, especially for all of my people, my tribe, who I don't, you know, don't have drinking dairy. But the beans itself are really important because okay. they're mycotoxin free. So I'm a big coffee fan, but I don't want the pesticides or the mold. Got it. So name a book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners today. Essentialism. This is one of the things that got me through, actually, was this concept of essentialism, of letting go of most of the stuff that you shouldn't really be bothering with anyway and just focusing on the one thing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that. Action Drive, I know how much you love our book recommendations. And I know that many of you purchase these books as soon as you hear them shared on our show. That's why audible.com is offering Action Tribe one free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial so that you can get to check out their amazing service. Now, Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, or Kindle, including bestsellers like The Chakra System by Anadia Judith, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, and A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. 
To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash MSC. Once again, that's audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E, trial.com forward slash MSC for your free audiobook. So JJ, thank you so much for joining us today. It was an absolute honor to have you on the show. Before you go, tell us one thing that you are grateful for and tell us the best way we can find you online. I've got two things I'm grateful for. I'm grateful I have both my kids with me and healthy and thriving. And uh, you can find me at jjvirgin.com. Wonderful. We'll have the link up in the show notes for sure. So JJ, thank you so much for coming on our show, talking to us about the miracle mindset and taking us one step closer to a human revolution. Thank you. You are listening to My 7 Chakras. Go to mysevenchakras.com. Download your free gift, get inspired and take action. Transform your life today.